Hi everybody, this presentation will cover acids and bases. Let's take a look at our unit learning objectives. The first goal is that students will be able to describe and name both acids and bases. Goal two is to compare characteristics of strong and weak acids and bases. Goal three asks that students will describe acid-base reactions. Goal four is that students will describe and use the pH scale. Finally, goal five is that students will explain how the concept of neutralization applies to titrations, which is a laboratory technique. Acid-base reactions involve the transfer of hydrogen ions. Here we see two water molecules. Here what we see is a water molecule which has had an additional hydrogen added to it. It becomes a hydronium ion. Uh, this water molecule which lost a hydrogen has now become a hydroxide ion. We see here the dissociation of hydrochloric acid. We can see that the HCl becomes separated from each other. The hydrogen will attach onto a water molecule forming a hydronium ion. This is H3O with a plus one charge. Because both of the electrons in the covalent bond here stay with this chlorine, it causes it to form a chloride ion which has a negative one charge. And we can see that the chloride ion with a negative charge will become surrounded by water molecules and it will attract the partially positive hydrogen side of water molecules in a shell of hydration. Let's take a look at the different theories which describe the behaviors of acids and bases. The first one we'll talk about is the Arrhenius theory. This one says that an acid is any substance which will dissociate, that means to break apart, which will produce hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. An example of this would be hydrochloric acid. We just saw that breaking apart to form hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Please note that these hydrogen ions will attach to a water molecule and form an H3O plus hydronium ion. Under the Arrhenius theory, a base is a substance that is going to dissociate to produce hydroxide ions in water. Sodium hydroxide will dissociate to produce sodium ions and, more importantly, hydroxide ions. A quick and easy way to identify most acids and bases is to look for a compound which begins with a hydrogen. If it starts with a hydrogen, chances are it is an acid. And to look for a compound which ends in OH. If it ends in OH, it is a base. The Bronsted-Lowry theory of acids and bases says that acids are uh, substances which will produce hydrogen ions uh, when they dissociate in water. So an acid would be a hydrogen ion donor uh, or a proton donor. Here we see sulfuric acid, H2SO4, uh, being dissolved in water to produce hydronium ions. That's what happens to the hydrogen ion. And a bisulfate or hydrogen sulfate ion. A base, so this isn't tons different than the previous definition. However, a base is now defined as a substance which can accept hydrogen ions. So it is a proton acceptor. Ammonia can be classified as a base under this theory, uh, but not under the Arrhenius theory. Uh, here we can see that ammonia, NH3, uh, when dissolved in water, can produce the ammonium NH4 plus ion and also produce hydroxide ions, and this will give it the basic behavior that it has. The Lewis definition of acids and bases says that acids are electron pair acceptors and that Lewis bases are substances which can be protonated, which means to have a hydrogen ion added to them. Properties of acids and bases. Acids are substances which will taste sour. They will react with metals to produce hydrogen gas. They'll react with metal carbonates to produce carbon dioxide gas. Their aqueous solutions conduct electricity. They will turn litmus paper red, and they typically start with H, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid. The bases are called alkalis. They would have a bitter taste. They'll feel slippery and smooth. Uh, because they react with oils and fats to produce soap. So if you get them on, their, on your hands, they'll react with the oil in your skin to produce a soapy substance. Their aqueous solutions will also conduct electricity. They will turn litmus paper from, uh, they'll turn it a blue color, and they will often end in OH. For example, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide. And we just learned about an example of an exception to this, which was ammonia, NH3. Let's discuss the nomenclature of acids. First, we need to consider acids which are binary. This means that they have only two elements. Their names will start with the prefix hydro, and the end of their name is going to come from the second element. For example, HCl, as a ionic compound, we would call this hydrogen chloride, but when it dissolves in water, we call it hydrochloric acid, chlor from the chlorine. H2S, 
this would be called hydrogen sulfide, but when it's dissolved in water, we do call it hydrosulfuric acid. Now, ternary acids are when we have hydrogen ions combined with polyatomic ions to form acidic substances. Here, we will not use hydro in the name unless we have a polyatomic ion whose name ends in the suffix "-ide". The name now is going to come from the polyatomic ion, which is in the acid. For example, let's consider these two similar acids, which have a very different name. H2SO4 comes from hydrogen sulfate. When dissolved in water, we call it sulfuric acid. H2SO3 would be hydrogen sulfite. We call this sulfurous acid when dissolved in water. Please note the eight ending from hydrogen sulfate changes to the ic ending in sulfuric acid, and the ite ending from the sulfite ion changes to the us ending in sulfurous acid. The ionization of strong and weak acids is referring to how well these different substances will dissociate or break apart when dissolved in water. Examples of strong acids, HCl, HBr, HI, are acids which will dissociate at a 100 percent rate when dissolved in water. So we'll have a complete dissociation. We'll produce all hydrogen ions and anions. Uh, this would be the Cl minus, Br minus, or I minus. Weak acids are substances which will have an equilibrium with both the original acid compound and the ions. So when we dissolve something like acetic acid in water or carbonic acid in water, we will get some dissociation of the acid to form hydrogen ions and the anion that the acid was built from. But we will also have some of the compound where the hydrogen ions and the anions are bonded together. Just as strong acids totally dissociate in water, so will strong bases. Uh, strong bases will include the group 1 and group 2 hydroxides, except for magnesium hydroxide, which is a weak base. So for example, barium hydroxide, BaOH2, will dissociate at a 100 percent rate in water to produce barium ions and hydroxide ions. Uh, here are some other examples of strong bases, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. Weak bases are those where there will be an equilibrium. For example, copper-1 hydroxide will dissociate to produce copper-1 ions and hydroxide ions. However, some of the copper and hydroxide ions will remain bonded together. Another example of a weak base is something is listed here, iron-3 hydroxide. A neutralization reaction refers to the process when an acid and a base are combined together. And the question is, what products will be formed? So acids and bases neutralize each other. When equal amounts of hydrogen ions and hydroxides come together, they will form water, H2O, or we can also call this HOH. An acid and base will react to form salt and water. The classic example of this is the reaction of hydrochloric acid, HCl, with sodium hydroxide, NaOH, to produce sodium chloride. We get the sodium from the base and the chloride ion from the acid. And then the other thing that's produced in this double replacement reaction is water, which is getting a hydrogen ion from the acid, that's right here, and the hydroxide ion from the base, that's right here. So we get HOH, liquid water. Let's take a look at the characteristics of salts which are produced in those acid-base reactions called neutralization reactions. Salts are ionic compounds. When dissolved in water, their solutions will conduct electricity. A normal salt contains no hydrogen ions, nor does it contain hydroxide ions. An example of this would be sodium chloride. Acid salts will have hydrogen ions, for example, sodium bicarbonate. Basic salts are going to have an OH. Here's an example of a basic salt. The self-ionization of water means that water is actually capable of dissolving in itself. Uh, this is because water can behave as both an acid and a base. It can lose a hydrogen ion to become a hydroxide ion. Uh, it can also gain a hydrogen ion to become a hydronium ion. So we see that water can be either a proton donor or a proton acceptor. We could summarize the reactions like this, two water molecules. We can see that one water molecule could take away or accept a proton from the other one. This would produce a hydronium ion. The other water molecule which lost its hydrogen would produce a hydroxide ion, the OH minus, right here. Let's do a quick review of the pH scale. We know that acids are substances which will have a pH under 7. Bases will have pHs over 7. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14. Neutral solutions have a pH of 7. And pH is based on the amount of hydrogen ion in the solution. Please take a moment to try to answer the following questions. Given a salt, 
please specify the acid and base which could be used to produce it. So please do that for these two salts. And then please identify the salt product which is going to be produced in an acid-base reaction. And there are two examples listed here. Please come to class prepared with answers to these, two, uh, these four questions. We have a couple of different standards to follow when we're going to determine pHs of solutions. For strong acids or bases, we are going to assume total ionization, and we can calculate the pH using the following equation. It is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. For weak acids or bases, we are going to need to use the ionization constant to find the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. The following information is really important to use when you're going to be calculating pHs given concentrations for different acids or base solutions. We need to know that pH is based on the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. We use this formula, formula that pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. We can rearrange this to solve for the hydrogen ion concentration, which would be 10 to the negative pH. Uh, so if pure water has a pH of 7, we know that the hydrogen ion concentration would be 1 times 10 to the minus 7. We can talk about hydrogen ion concentrations referring to pH. POH looks at the concentration of hydroxide ions. So as we use the negative log of hydrogen ion concentrations to calculate pH, we can use the negative log of hydroxide ion concentrations to calculate POH. pH plus POH must equal 14 and the concentration of hydrogen ions multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide ions must equal something called the Kw. This is the Kw of water, which has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Let's take a look at some different examples of calculating pH. So what is the hydrogen ion concentration of water with a pH of 7.0? The answer for this is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. We would find this by doing 10 to the negative pH, which is 10 to the minus 7. Now, what is the hydrogen ion concentration of blood if the pH is 7.4? Now you would need to enter into your calculator 10 to the negative 7.4, and your result would be 4.0 times 10 to the minus 8. What is the hydroxide ion concentration for a solution with a pH of 3.4? Uh, there are a couple different strategies you could use to solve this one. Please remember that the pH plus pOH must equal 14. Also that hydrogen ion concentration multiplied by hydroxide ion concentration should equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14. You should be able to arrive at a solution of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 11 molar for this last question. We will discuss how to solve this in class. Let's take a closer look at the calculations that would be involved working with weak acids. For this, we'll need to use the, something called the ionization constant to find the concentration of either hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. The dissociation of a weak acid can be summarized as follows. HA will dissociate to produce hydrogen ions and anions. In this case, we would get from nitric acid H plus ions and NO2 minus ions. So the Ka for this reaction would be H plus multiplied by A minus over HA. Now we can determine what the concentrations of hydrogen ions are for the one molar solution by using the following information. We know that the Ka for nitrous acid is 6.0 times 10 to the minus 4. And some notes here. Because the H plus ions and and O2 ions are going to be produced at equal amounts, we can assign the variable X to each of them. And we know that because the original concentration was 0.1 molar, that 0.1 minus X will give us the concentration of undissociated HNO2. So we can plug in the values of X right here, X right here, 0.1 minus X right here, and the Ka value of 6.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. This works out to be, when we solve for zero, a quadratic equation. So we'll need to use this formula in order to find the answer to this problem. And the solutions for x work out to be 7.4 times 10 to the minus 3 molar and negative 8.0 times 10 to the minus 3rd molar. But we know that molarity can't be a negative value. So the hydrogen ion concentration would work out to be 7.4 times 10 to the minus 3. We could take the negative log of this value and that would allow us to calculate the pH for this solution of nitrous acid. 
please visit my YouTube channel for additional videos discussing the nomenclature of acids, ionization constants of acids, neutralization reactions and salts, pH calculations of strong acids and bases, and also for weak acids, and finally titration calculations using the equation M1V1 equals M2V2.